57-year-old Miguel Diaz Canel has been chosen to replace Raul Castro as president. For the first time in almost 60 years, the head of state will not be a member of the Castro family. Diaz Canel secured the backing of all but one seat in the National Assembly. Our correspondent in Havana, Michael Voss, has the details. Raul Castro swapped his general's uniform for a smart business suit for what will be his final day as head of state. Arriving beside him for the opening session of the new National Assembly was Miguel Diaz Canel, the man nominated to replace him. The position of president, along with 30 other members of the inner cabinet, the Council of State, must be ratified by a secret ballot of the 605 deputies who make up the National Assembly. I think if he's young, his ideas may be new, but in tune with the revolution. That's the way I'd like it to be. I don't want the country going capitalist. In a capitalist country, you have to pay for everything, for electricity, for water, even if you get ill. This means a continuation of going forward. Fidel gave Cubans the strength to keep pushing forward at any cost. With Raul, and now a younger president, youth imposes itself. We must keep going forward. This marks a significant generational change. Cuba's former leader, Fidel Castro, ruled the island for almost 50 years. He stepped down due to ill health, passing the presidency on to his younger brother, Raul Castro. Now, for the first time, Cuba has a head of state who's not a Castro. 57-year-old Miguel Díaz-Canel is an electrical engineer by training who rose through the ranks of the Communist Party, including as provincial head of his home state, Villa Clara. He's seen by some as a liberal, supporting gay rights, greater internet access and a more open press. Miguel Díaz-Canel is the first Cuban leader who isn't part of the historic generation who fought in the Cuban Revolution in 1959. He doesn't have the same authority and legitimacy as the Castros. He now faces the daunting task of how to turn Cuba's struggling economy around and whether to push forward the island's stalled market reforms. Michael Voss, CGTN, Havana. A historic moment indeed for Cuba. Let's get to the very latest now on those developments in Cuba. Michelle Begu joins us from Havana. Michelle, so what's the latest coming out of Cuba with a new president now at the helm? Yes, well, Miguel Diaz-Canel has been confirmed. He is president and he gave a speech where he talked about that continuity that we were hearing other Cubans talk about. He talked about continuing the revolution even after its guerrilla members like Raul Castro are stepping down. And we're talking with analysts and they're saying this is a continuation, a succession, not just of one person, but just of a generation. We need to understand that that state council uh, of 31 members, 87% of them are a new generation that was born after the Cuban Revolution. But definitely during the speech made by Miguel Diaz-Canel, there was a sense of building on the past, of moving forward, but not uh, throwing away those ideals of the revolution. And even after Miguel Diaz-Canel spoke, Raul Castro went up to the podium and he spoke for another hour and a half, uh, speaking of these ideals, speaking of the new generation and giving his support to this new government. Well, the Castro family, uh, Michelle, leaves a huge legacy behind. So how are Cubans reacting to the prospect of not having a Castro lead the country? There is this wait and see approach to see what happens. This is going to be a smooth transition. Uh, it is a continuity, uh, as many of the government officials have said and as many of the Cubans are saying. And so they're going to wait and see exactly how he brings a new breath of fresh air and how he tackles some of the issues that they are most concerned about, which is the economy, how to revitalize this struggling economy. How is it going to affect their pocketbooks? And they, they want to see exactly what the new proposal
proposals are going to be. Is there going to be a change and what kind of change to the private sector? Uh, but it is a wait and see approach. It isn't, uh, it isn't a, a uh, it, it's, it's a continuation. They are clear that this isn't going to be a change uh, towards capitalism at all. This is, this is going to continue with the socialist ideals of the revolution. And as the Cubans uh, await that uh, wait, uh, take that wait and see approach, though, Michelle, getting down to business now, how does Cuba's new president stamp his own authority on government and put minds at ease? Well, you definitely got the sense that during this speech, he was trying to put minds at ease, especially in the government, that this is a continuation, as we said, that there aren't going to be, changes will be made, but the necessary changes. But uh, definitely, we have to remember that Miguel Diaz uh, Canel has been by the side of Raul Castro for the past five years as the first vice president. Uh, and he is talking about change, and he is uh, known to, to be um, open uh, uh, in social issues and such and uh, in media but this again is a continuation people are going to wait and see what what happens in the future he has a lot to tackle uh, coming on dual currency that is supposed to be united and and uh, obviously the private sector that we've seen we, we've seen a lot of changes since 2011 steadily uh, happening they were started by Raul Castro and what analysts are saying is Miguel Diaz will probably continue this line it's just about how how uh, how long and how far uh, or how fast and how far it will go all right uh, Michelle beg you joining us there from Cuba from Havana thank you